Yeah, yeah. So it's always going to be something new. When, when a person decides to be themselves, they offer something no one else can be. Yeah, because once you be you, who, yeah. who can be you but you? Right. That's what's wrong right now. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Migos, but all them niggas sound the same. I said, nigga had me in the studio one night trying to do that shit. I'm like, man, cut this shit off. What the fuck am I in here doing? Nigga, I don't rap like that. He said, what the fuck you got me doing? Yeah, you know, you can't be too good, man. You gotta know where you're from. You gotta know, you know what I mean? Um, you can't lose your people, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't lose sight of what it, this is a facade, mm -hmm. this entertainment thing. You know, this is just, you know, here today, gone today, you know, but your family, your people are always gonna be there. So you can't never lose sight of that. True to the game. And we made a demo tape, and the demo tape had Pass Me By on it, and it had um, Officer, the song called Officer, mm -hmm. and the song called Your Mama. That was our demo tape, man. We gave it to Paul Stewart, and... White boy Paul Stewart? Paul Stewart? Dude, stop, man. stop, stop. You said white boy. At the time, we was like, you got to get a white dude. We, we thought, we was like, we got to get <laughs> a white dude. We did. We was like, in hood niggas, we was like, you got to get a white dude, because he got that, that white dude is like the gatekeeper. He going to take you to the right people and shit. And Paul Stewart was our white dude. He was our white guy. He's a half nigga, though. So for those who don't know, you got your start with the group Gangstar. Yeah, absolutely. As the producer slash DJ. And when did y'all drop y'all first single? First single came out in 1988. Mm. And what song was that? Words I Manifest. Oh, do 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 do. Yes, sir. Do 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 do. Do 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 You got it. You got it. These are the words that I manifest. I manifest. You know what I'm saying? And when I started in 81, it wasn't too many niggas doing this shit. And when I was finding niggas that was better than me, I would get better than them. And then I I going around serving other niggas. And then when I found a nigga like you that was like, damn, this nigga. It's better than me. This nigga is dope. I was thinking like, this nigga here better than me. Cause even though my rhymes is harder, what he's saying got the crowd like, ugh, and it's just so slick. Like, just slick. It was like, I, I rhyme, but you was talking about California and shit, man, but tight like me. I wasn't used to. You know, yeah, I was fresh out from the, Philly. I was fresh out you know, the joint. I came out though. here. This was lovely. I had that joint I was teaching talk. people how to rap because they had the, they had the slickness. But I told I was teaching people how to rap. Niggas but was, you was hard though. But cause the dog I, was just. You old. served five niggas before you got to me. I mean, I did do that. Yeah, these are my buddies too. But stay between the park. It was at war. Oh, y'all neighborhoods wasn't cool. Oh no, these neighbors. Only only cool spot between those two projects is my house. Oh wow, you the center block. Yeah, you come to my house, nigga. You come to eleven o'clock on Friday. Your worst enemy could be sitting on my couch. But I'm the god. I'm, you know, I'm building mathematics. So, so now so, you you the you the peacemaker. Yeah. So that everybody cool out. We gonna make songs, nigga. So now you see enemies working get, together. Working together. You know what I mean? I seen a nigga got shot by Park Hill niggas. Ran to my crib. One of the niggas that got at you, niggas. It's right, right here, up nigga. in here. You, you ran to them. But it was all. But anyway. But anyway, as that built up, I was like, I just realized that Wu Tang was was a way, you know, a slang in a way, you know, because Wu Tang was a sports style of martial art. And mm. I felt like we had the best lyrics. So I said, Yo, we the Wu Tang, nigga. It was just amazing how E passed, and then them two, and it kind of got old. E's death got overshadowed because yeah. of the massiveness of yeah. Pac and Big and all mm -hmm. that media. It was it was it was a crazy yeah. time. Everybody was rolling around with something on them. But I, I don't you know? think it got mm -hmm. overlooked by us. Mm, the right. people at the house, meaning the West Coast, and y'all. Mm. Because remember what happened after that? We became friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When before yes. that, we wasn't Amazing. friends. Right. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because of certain restrictions and ramifications between their relationship, but that knocked the wall down where right. it was like, yeah. you know what? It did. For yeah. the spirit of Easy e Nigga, mm -hmm. we fucking with them because we all the same. We all from mm -hmm. the same tree. Right. It's just, you know, they would easy, we would motherfucking Dre. But guess what, nigga? Yes. If the bullshit went in the game, we'd all be together. Anyway, right. Yeah, all the on top. So, is there anybody that you, you know, that you really want to work with that you haven't worked with yet that you like, you know? 
Uh, you know, it's a gang of motherfuckers that be watching my show, so you can even knock a bitch on this show, man. I just seen <laughs> niggas come on here and say, man, I really want to meet this particular bitch. <laughs> and he met the bitch, and they go together now. So you can do whatever you want on this show, um, man. I want to do a I want to do a joint with Missy really bad. Missy Elliott? Yeah. Missy. What's up with it, home girl? How you doing? Long time no see. <laughs> yeah. Just chilling, kicking it, doing my shit, GGN. You know what it is. Yeah, I know. But uh, anyway, what I was hitting you about was uh, my nephew right here trying to get a record with you. You know Mac. You done heard his shit. Yeah, my nigga, real. Yeah, real shit. He fuck with you. He love you. Okay, so what he gonna do? He gonna send you the email. You, you know. Okay, for sure. Yeah, his, yeah, his people, all right, for sure, all right. They're looking out, all right, Missy, for sure. I'll let you get back. Now, what the fans is asking me is, when is Ice Cube going to direct a movie with Snoop Dogg in it? <laughs> whether it's a, I'm just, this is what the fans are saying. This has nothing to do with me. They say whether it's a comedy or an action or a drama, Cube directed Snoop Dogg is an Academy Award ready to be granted. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I ain't directed since the Players Club. Well, I mean, you went to pull your directing hand out, nigga, because that was one of the coldest movies that ever come out. Yeah, it was cold, but it, man, you yeah, know. Yeah, Bernie Mac on one. Yeah, Dollar Bernie Mac. Bill. Dollar Bill was a fool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on. I know that my son is into the music because, you know, from an early age, he went on, he went big tours with me, you know, like Black Eyed Peas in Canada or Beastie Boys. Like, he was seeing big, big shows. My son was starstruck though. Mm -hmm. He was on uh, Absol. I was already fucking with Soul, but I asked him, I said, who your favorite rapper? He was like, Absol, my favorite rapper. I'm like, he coming, he coming over the crib this weekend. He was like, Absol coming over that the crib this weekend? I was like, yeah, and then, you know, you know, so they, you know, them niggas burn it down. They burn it down. So it's like. So you let him get in? No, I did not. <laughs> we was in the studio in the back. <laughs> we was in the studio Come in the on, back. Pops, goddamn, Dad. <laughs> You just lost uh -uh. 15 cool dad points with him with that <laughs> shit right there. Just you talking on stage to talk to a crowd and with no, without the do, doing your performance, that's him seeing. You rhyming when you spitting, mm -hmm. him seeing when you like, hey yo, how many of y'all want to such such such? Ah, you could ask that same question. They'll be like, ah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and if that's how they do it, and them see them go, hold up, did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. I, I gotta make Master maybe one of those. Yeah, ceremonies. you gotta control that crowd. Okay, so you teaching them? Yeah, you know, but a lot of people that want it, but that want the mic are not MCs. <laughs> you know, the, there is a difference. The MCs will always be able to live in the culture. Fifty Cent, what's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up in the morning? I, well, I, I'm usually thinking, where am I? Where am I at? Like, what? Because if we touring or we somewhere else, like I look around and say, oh, who is this bitch? This with me. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga said the first day he do it. Who is this bitch that's with me? Not only did we motivate our youngsters to step up the game and, and you know, and be something on the West Coast, but they motivating us like nigga. Boy. <laughs> you know? They flipping and, a script on us right now real tough. For real, yeah. I'm, I'm loving that shit. I'm like, man, I, I, I just like the good music. My favorite thing about what goes on in my world is, uh, is to see the next the next homie like you know catch 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 on to what the formula is mm -hmm. and then apply it and then see this nigga get a house and see this nigga throw a party and see this nigga pull up in his car and just get used to it mm -hmm. you know not not with somebody just excited to have a fucking uh, 745 beamer that's gonna be the one and only time he shine he fall I'm talking about the niggas that's gonna make a career out of this mm -hmm. and you see a youngster come into it and survive it and learn it and he like he gets it that's the real shit. So how did it happen for you? Did, did Dr. Dre drive through Compton in a low rider drinking a 40 ounce and stop by the liquor store, ran out of gas, and was like, yeah. hey man, is that Kendrick Lamar? <laughs> oh, I mean, how did it go down? Did he, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because it just don't sound like no regular hood story that, you know, yeah. he could just be riding through the hood and just bump into that's you. Exactly. You just don't bump into nah, things like that. That's what I want to tell the world. That's a good ass story like a motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> let me know, man, because I want, I mean, this is the GGN News Network. You get this show opportunity to let the world know. I mean, it's a hundred million people watching right now. Shit. Well, uh, Paul Rosenberg, he heard the music first. He Dre up and said, yo, it's a kid from Compton, nigga, that's crazy. He seen a video on YouTube, uh, checked out my interviews. He said he, he he liked it, not just the music, but just me as a person in general. You, know mm -hmm. I mean? you fuck with people with music all day, but when you poly with them, they don't have that same energy. It's a, it's a negative vibe, so. Yes, sir. We locked in, man, and, and we clicked. It was chemistry right there, so. Dude and Kappa and Jill, it was a rap battle, and they gave, it was, it was the battle was on Staten Island, so they gave it to the home favorite, 
And but he really didn't. Yeah, they he really yeah, didn't yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a dope <laughs> nigga, though, but, you know, they gave it all favor. But that, that night, though, Dirk was like, I'm robbing a nigga for the reward money. You know what I'm saying? Well, nigga, if I can't get it, I'm going to get it. The nigga, but I was like, nah, nah, that's my man's, kid. I live out here. That's my man's, you know, original. He ain't, he ain't, yeah, you still eating honey buns. Because back then, you couldn't even eat. Pork, pork couldn't even be in your bread, nigga. And he was still eating honey buns. <laughs> nigga, like, like, we watching every piece of pork you eat, you motherfucker. You, but, you ain't righteous, nigga. <laughs> nigga, eating a honey bun. Oh, so how'd you get your name corrupt? You know what I'm saying? How'd you settle in on corrupt? Because you know everybody had another name before they became right. who the fuck they was. You know what I'm saying? Niggas know I was Snoop Rockski. You know what I'm right. saying? Well, you know, how did you settle in on corrupt? And what was the name that you was riding with before you became corrupt? Well, first thing is, I've been rocking the mic since eight. Right? Mm -hmm. So, when I was 12, I was serving 18 and 19 year olds in Philly, mm. right? And they called me the kid. First thing they say, what you rapping? Where's the kid at? Then it changed into uh, uh, K-I-D. Mm. You understand me? I had to abbreviate it, K-I-D, you understand me? <laughs> so I kept the K, right? And then when I got to California at 16, <laughs> the Hawthorne Mall, the Hawthorne Six, Lou Zinger, Everywhere it was, corrupt is the one from this particular I serve everybody. And you was corrupt then? Nope. I was I was I was K-Rock. Oh, okay. my name to K-Rock. That's the third name. You didn't say it, nigga. Come yeah. on. What's official what's official <laughs> old player age? 45, 50? What, what's old player age? Player age now you got to move it up some. It ain't what it used to be. I swear. Cause player age is I say what about 51, 52. All the young girls say, you ain't the oldest nigga I fuck with. <laughs> they tell you that. <laughs> how was it working with Jay Dilla, man, and how did he influence y'all? Certain people you see, you just say, okay, it's something beyond knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like certain people, like I know people that know the drum machine, hella. I've seen people that know that shit in and out. I've been with some white dude engineers, they know that shit in and out. Crazy. But it's certain things that's above knowledge. It's certain things that he that he just it it was just there. That's yeah. deep. You like KRS? KRS said, I will not repeat the same wrong. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> KRS one is like my teacher. Like oh you know what God. I'm saying? Like big time. To me, I really would love to spar with KRS one on some private shit. Like that's my oh, teacher. Yeah, you'll have fun doing it too. Exactly. I'll be on the wheels. Yeah, that's like my nigga. Like I want to spar with you, Chris, because I remember that party we did once upon a time when I did a video and he showed up and that motherfucker took the mic and he just killed that shit. Mm. I was in that motherfucker like. God yeah, no damn, dope, this man. nigga KRS One <clears throat> is Muhammad Ali on the microphone. Yeah, and like he said, he if you're in the top twenty, he already knows what, what your album's about, and he has a rhyme ready to dish you if you ever cross him. Ever, ever. I like the fact that you make great family movies, cause like you make movies that I could take my whole family to see, and that to me is an exceptional, you know, point of view to be able to come from gangster rap, the shit you come from in the beginning. I look at the early you to the man you are now and the movies that you make now to where you could take the whole family, you, you could take your grandparents, your kids, your cousins. Like, how did you get that, that pen to be able to write that style of shit? I watch all kind of movies. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a place for everything. And I also felt like I can't just worry about my generation all the time mm -hmm. and worry about my fans all the time. I gotta be able to touch the whole family because I want the youngsters to like me too just as much as the the parents. Mm. I want the kids to know who I am. I don't want the parents to have to say, no, nah, hold on, Cube is cool, just wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want them to know because they like one of my movies. A lot of the artists that what, what I find now is in our culture they Things are trending. Yeah. So they're following what what the last person just did. Everybody, of, music do this. Yeah, offering something new. It's the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah. If right. your shit don't do this, you ain't hot. Yeah, there you go. It's like this. Yeah. I got a whole album. That motherfucker don't do yeah. none of this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel something. If you play a new joint, they be like, I feel something, but it's not making me do this. <laughs> what do you feel about the state of rap right now? The state of rap, I I, I think it's up to the new generation to put it back to the perspective of how y'all had it. You know what I'm saying? So I like where it's going. You got me, myself, Dom Kennedy, mm -hmm. Nip, mm -hmm. J-Rock. Mm -hmm. It's getting back to a real G era where we feel like we doing what we want to do and we not about to do what the industry do. 
You know what I'm saying? So I like where it's at for us to LA. Are y'all unified? Is there a lot of unity out here? Is it, or is it separation? Or is it individuality? What's going on? It's a lot of unity. You know what I mean? I'm right here probably with my cats, you know? When I come to different studios and holler at them, it ain't just on no music tip. It's on some stuff like, yo, we, okay. gotta, we gotta keep it where it was at. Yeah, but see, that's what this thing was built on. It was built on peace, love, and harmony. And see, once y'all understand that, y'all gonna go forever, man. Y'all right. gonna run with it, because it's y'all's to play with. Right. You know, we threw with it and don't know what to do with it. Right. We just sitting back, you know, watching, because we still know how to play, and we know how to shoot and assist y'all. Oh, but, you know, it's really for y'all to make a new thing out of it and, and keep it fresh and fly, so, you know. I want to let you know you got my blessings, you got all the hip hop blessings. Judge. You know, keep that Preach. thing moving, man, and Tabernacle. be productive about it. And make sure you spread it. You know what I'm saying? When you get it, spread it. Exactly. For real, though. I this remember Death Row was giving out deals if you could serve corrupt. Remember when we was out of town? Mm -hmm. Niggas, these niggas, three niggas came up and these other two niggas, man. They was like, look, <laughs> Shook, nigga, if you, could, if you could serve corrupt, you we'll get a you, deal. You get a deal. Shook Knight was notorious for that. I cut that. Ain't man. nobody got no deal. But what about the night? <laughs> look, what? Not that way. No, yeah. not no. They won't be getting a deal that way. How many times a day do you think about sex? Do thinking about booties count? Yep, that's that's <laughs> sex oriented. See, that's not fair. That's yeah. not fair. Cause he said sex, like intercourse, like. I didn't say sexual intercourse. I said, sex. how many times a day do you think about sex? Sometimes booties just pop in your mind, though. No. That's sex. Let's say about eight. I say eight, you know, just hard, just like I'm just drifting off, like, mm. Okay, that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I look for blank in a woman. I, I was looking for something different until I walked in here, Snoop, and he said, Shorty, did the blue. <laughs> I said, what I did. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real pimp. Don't let the song fool you. <laughs>